The Return of Steve McQueen's Bullet Mustang This morning, Mark Strassman is in hot pursuit of the most famous, yet most elusive Ford Mustang of them all. In the 1968 classic Bullet, Steve McQueen gave every future James Bond and Jason Bourne a driving lesson. Audiences felt as though they were riding shotgun. It was Hollywood's first major car chase shot not on a studio lot, but in real time, at real speeds, out on the streets and hills of San Francisco. I think McQueen was the key to designing this in a way that had never been seen before, said Tim Zinneman, the movie's assistant director. He said at one point director Peter Yates closed off 60 square blocks of the city. And how much driving did McQueen himself do? As much as he could get away with, Zinneman replied. Driving faster than 100 miles per hour meant a number of close calls. McQueen, an accomplished race car driver, blocked out the chase scenes himself. But the movie's other star was its 1968 Ford Mustang GT Fastback. Together, car and driver were the epitome of old-school cool. He was cool, but he was enthusiastic in going to details and wanting things to be right, said actress Jacqueline Bissett, who played McQueen's girlfriend in Bullet. She was 23, and breaking into Hollywood. It was a beautiful car, the Bullet car, she said. Do you understand why the car has the mystique it has? Strassman asked. To a certain degree, Bissett laughed. Fast, low-lying, smooth, sexy guy in the front seat. You've had your share of onset experiences with alpha males, where does McQueen rank? Pretty regular, Bissett said. Not overly alpha male, no. He'd come and go stealthily, stealthily. After the movie, the bullet Mustang was just as stealthy, it disappeared. For decades, the Mustang became the holy grail for car collectors. And it became a family secret for Robbie Kiernan, though she told Strassman, it was never meant to be a secret, it was just our car. Her late husband, Robert, saw an ad in the back pages of Road and Track magazine, and bought the Bullet Mustang in 1974 for $6,000. It was unbelievable, she said. We had seen the movie, and then to see the car. It still had the camera mounts underneath the chassis, and a huge hole in the trunk for the smoke machine. The growl of the Mustang's V8 engine was deafening. I taught at a Catholic school, and the nuns heard the car and said, well, there's Robbie. She said. At one point Steve McQueen tracked them down, and asked the Kiernans to buy back what he called my Mustang. Said Robbie, it was part of our family at that point. We had too many memories. The reality is that it was your car, and you weren't giving it up. No, she smiled. After 1980, the car was garaged, out of sight in a barn on their family farm in Tennessee. This is the most personal thing that we have, said Robbie's son, Sean Kiernan. Last year he restored it top to bottom. Today, it's 98% original. I was in it to preserve history, Sean told Strassman. I wasn't in it to make a shiny new object, I was in it to make something genuine and raw. For him, the car's star power means more than Steve McQueen. It's not just a 68 fastback, it is my dad's car, said Sean. So, the rest of the world will look at the car and see Steve McQueen, but you'll look at the car and always see your father? Asked Strassman. Without a doubt. The Kiernans are finally going public with the family secret, rolling it out at the Detroit Auto Show, in its original faded glory.